and greetings everybody and welcome to another Jester Reviews and today I'd like to bring you the Jemadar Heavy Strike Wing Escort T6X and I have to say I think this ship is excellent. Um, I've been using her for most of the week now and I have grown quite fond of her to be honest with you. I think the design is excellent. I like her with the uh, Baal vanity shield on. Unfortunately I can't put that on for you because it's a little bit difficult for you to see but uh, as you can see the design of this ship is oh it's excellent isn't it I really do like it now I'm told um, that well I'm suitably informed to be honest with you that this is another excellent ship that you can use for PvP and I've yet to try her out in a, uh, a PvP match but uh, Yes, I think I'll last all but uh, five seconds. Uh, yes, I'm still not uh, still not that good, I'm afraid. Uh, but never mind, never mind. I have some very good teachers in uh, my fleet leaders, Aunt Becky and Katrina. And thank you to them because, uh, yes, they have uh, been really helpful in... Uh, my PvP builds, if you like. Anyhow, this is actually a lobby ship, um, but I bought this on the exchange, and it was a little under, I think, 350 million EC. Yes, and it went up in price. I think the highest one was just under. A a billion so I was very uh, very lucky to catch it to be honest with you uh, I'd had my eye on it for some time and as soon as I hit that amount of EC I went for it in a big way and uh, I'm quite pleased I did anyhow there you go excellent excellent ship right so without further ado let's have a quick look at the build shall we Right, with this being a T6X, um, we get an extra trait slot, we get an extra device slot, and an extra console slot. So, uh, this is a four weapons to the front and three weapons to the rear build. Uh, at the front, going from left to right, I have three spiral wave disruptor dual beam banks all at various stages of modifiers i'm afraid i think two of them are crit d times three and one is uh, uh accuracy times two and critical age critical hit i'm also using the enhanced biomolecular photon torpedo now i have to say that i have tried this and it was recommended by a friend and um, this actually hits like a truck well actually hits like two trucks to be honest with you so the 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 stats on this are quite simple if you have a look here um, kinetic damage versus non undine 8958 kinetic damage versus undine 10749 now this is uh, torpedoes high yield 2 watch what happens when we hit that uh, there you go 22,988 kinetic damage non undine 27,585 kinetic damage versus undine this torpedo is one of the um, best torpedoes in the game and uh, yes I've tried her out and um, I'm very impressed with it very impressed uh, moving on to the deflector I'm using the elite fleet intervention protomatter deflector array which is becoming popular 
uh, in the ranks of PvP players, which I'm still developing. And we have the Impulse Engines, which is the prevailing Innovated Impulse Engines. Innovated. Innovated. I've got it right this time. Um, last week, it took me loads of takes to say that. I have no idea why I had such difficulty with that. But anyhow, moving on. Uh, the Warp Core uh, and the Shields are part of the Discovery set. And the two-piece set gives you... 120% hull regeneration. Hull regeneration scales with maximum hull. So that's the idea behind having these two together. The rear weapons consist of one spiral wave disruptor beam array. The House of Martok disruptor, which comes as part of a two piece set with the console engine actually it's a three-piece set i do apologize it's a three-piece set because there is the house of martok transphasic torpedo launcher uh, so yes i'm using the two-piece set and the two-piece set gives us uh what's it give us there we go 2.5 critical chance and plus 15 accuracy rating uh, target uh, disruptor damage All right. That this is actually new to my build uh, is this uh, particular piece of kit. Um, I'm just trying it out, but I'm, so far I'm quite impressed with it, to be honest with you. But uh, right here, we're moving on. Uh, the final uh, rear weapon is the Terran Task Force Disruptor Beam Array, and this is also part of a set. But um, I've actually run out of consoles to put this console slots to put it in. And I'm not keen on moving anything around, to be honest with you. But uh, anyhow, uh, that's going to give me a 2% board and soil damage. And this is a very good beam array. This is from your reputations tab. Uh, the devices. Uh, we have weapons battery. Two weapons batteries, in fact. Red matter capacitor. Phased waveform beacon. Actually, I'm going to swap that out. Uh, well, there's not much to replace it with actually I'll, I'll leave it alone for now um, universal console I'm using the M6 computer console and that gives me a plus 15% bonus all damage for 15 seconds and a plus 25% cooldown reduction on tactical bridge officer abilities 20% uh, firing arc haste oops firing arc haste all weapons for 15 seconds plus 30 Accuracy rating for 15 seconds and plus 30 defense rating for 15 seconds with a two minute recharge. Another new addition to my uh, build is the Universal Weapon Sensor Enhancer. And I'd like to thank uh, Katrina, uh, my Fleet Admiral, for uh, giving me advice to get this because this gives you a plus 42 accuracy rating and plus 42 starship ablative hull plating uh, this is a lobby item and as we're in a lobby sale i took advantage of that and picked it up for what did i pick it up for i think it was bear with me let's have a look fence actually where are we there we are i picked this up for 160 low buy normally it's up at 200 um and then i um upgraded it to epic uh, next in my engineering console is the um, Trellum D plating, uh, which gives me 17.5 all damage resistance rating, 26.2 starship hull capacity. Tachyokinetic converter, 39.4 flight turn rate, 1.3 critical chance and 13.1 critical severity. We've spoken about the um, engineering house of matter defensive configuration um, console that wasn't easy to say was it house martok defensive configuration wow well, anyway moving on um again uh, this is another um console which is becoming part of my build and this is the universal dynamic power redistributor module and this gives you 11.3 all damage resistance rating and 90 percent directed energy damage uh now 
also this is a really special console actually and I, I say this every time but if you're a, a KDF Align player you may pick this up off the exchange for uh, I think it's about 15 million last time I looked uh, fortunately if you're a Federation Align player your only chance of picking this up is via the Atlas so if you win an Atlas on a lockbox you'll find it's in there uh, moving on to the universal obfuscation screen they're all coming out tonight aren't they all these uh, hard to say ones but anyway we're going to give it a go and that's giving me a plus 10 accuracy rating plus 10 defense rating and a 14.3 statute damage control so it's also a very nice clicky in pvp if you're in trouble hit that and for 20 seconds um no one can touch you you become indestructible um again if you do use this for pvp be mindful some pvp players don't like using it and uh, you, you could end up finding yourself uh, being barred from a pvp match if you're using this um, my fleet um, hasn't bothered me about it but i have read uh, in some pvp matches that this is uh, this, this this can be banned um, i've also uh, read that there's other items in pvp matches which we'll go into later uh, which can be uh, banned these are placates and confusion consoles which we'll talk about at some later stage moving on to tactical console i'm using the domino which is giving me 15 percent phase of damage and 20 percent accuracy rating uh, even though we're not using phases I've, i like it for the accuracy rating and the 25 percent fire firing cycle haste for energy weapons and 25 percent bonus all damage plus 25 recharge speed for bridge officer abilities and 100 percent recharge speed for torpedo weapons as well that fits very nicely uh, with this torpedo which can't half bang a bit i can tell you uh, this is the console that comes with the ship the universal enhanced dominion coordination protocol and this is giving me a 15 percent directed energy damage and an eight percent critical severity damage buff movement buff uh, immunities 15 percent all damage bonus for 15 seconds 60 percent flight turn rate for 15 seconds whoops lost it what have we done with it there we are 60 percent flight speed for 15 seconds 100 100 inertia rating for 15 seconds immunity to confuse placate flight speed debuffs and turn rate debuffs for 15 seconds prevents the target from using or being affected by fleet maneuver gamma for 60 seconds wow and this is part of a what is it part of a three-piece set and i believe i believe these are on other dominion ships which i don't think i've got i'm gonna have to look into that uh moving on this is the uh second part of the set with the universal uh dynamic power redistributor module which i forgot to mention this is part of a two-piece set and um, this is the whoops it is i'm going clicking mad today aren't i going clicking crazy right uh point defense bombardment warhead and i've done it again i've lost it again there we go 25 percent projectile projectile damage plus one percent critical chance so again this is going to work very well with this torpedo isn't it um creates a point defense bombardment warhead that flies towards the target's current location three times 1695.6 kinetic damage every second to random enemies five kilometer radius when target reached all falls in two kilometers 14127.5 kinetic damage wow that's quite cool uh tactical weapons carried on with the tactical uh, console universal hostile acquisition for the 30 accuracy rating and plus 30 starship control expertise and the barrel neural infusion circuits again for the uh, critical severity 26.2 and this is the one this is again another uh, must have console if you're going to uh, play pvp matches so the consoles which um, 
I would recommend if you're in if you're going into PvP would be the bio neural infusion circuits, the universal dynamic power redistributor module, the tachyokinetic converter, and the universal weapon sensor enhancer. And they they are the backbone of this build I would say if you're going to use it for PvP. Um, also the deflector array, the elite fleet intervention protomatter deflector along with the impulse prevailing in innovator, I nearly lost it then, innovated impulse engines. So those are, if, if you're going to use this ship for PvP, those are the uh, bits and pieces that you'd need to, it, you know, from what I've been reading that uh, you, you should have in your build. I think we've not touched upon these experimental weapons, have we? Uh, so this is the experimental dual warhead launchers and this targets a one kilometer radius kinetic damage and 360 targeting out to target 9180.9 kinetic damage times two and that gives me a plus two percent critical chance 10 percent critical severity plus 10 accuracy rating every six every six uh, eight seconds this is again i i like this i like this uh, experimental weapons console this is quite cool as well now this is a carrier although you wouldn't believe it and um, I have uh, purchased the elite Jemadar fighters from my fleet um, which it comes with the rare fighters and uh, yes if you if your fleets advance to the appropriate tiers you'll be able to pick these fighters up and upgrade the uh, your hangar um, fighters for your ship right moving on quickly to the stations we have a lieutenant commander universal stroke pilot station we have a lieutenant universal station we have a commander tactical station and we have a lieutenant engineering stroke intelligence station and finally we have a lieutenant science station so in the U in the uh, lieutenant universal pilot station i've made my engineering in the universal uh universal uh, lieutenant station i've made that tactical and the rest is straightforward isn't it there you go uh traits Now then, um, I think I'll just go through the important ones here. Context is for kings. I looked that up on the uh, exchange yesterday, and that was up at 15 million EC. Not cheap, that. Um, superior beam training. This is from your fleet. I think it, is it K7? from your fleets uh, upgrade your uh, beam weapons I think it's from 5% to 7.5 superior beam training uh, this is another piece of uh, another piece of kit which I like repair crews uh, now starship traits I've been told with this one that I could have some diminishing returns I'm working on that uh, and I will let you know um, what the outcome is on that space reputation I'm running Tyler's duality unshaken resolve magnified fire power precision rank 2 and automated protomatter conduits I mean we'll go through the starship traits if you want um, Vulcan hello invincible preferential targeting emergency weapon cycle desperate repairs and because this is a 6x I've got an extra slot and it's advantageous positioning right I think that's covered everything oh hang on uh, I'll tell you what we haven't covered we haven't covered the statistics have we here we go so the hull on this ship is 108,207 uh, with a hull repair rate of 312 the shields 
22,638. The resists are in the early 30s. The accuracy rating is 149.8. And the critical chance is 34.4%. And critical severity 151.1%. Now I'm just wondering if I... Is that the one? If I click on that. There we go. So I can get the accuracy rating up to 1797 with the aid of the M6 computer. So that's quite cool, isn't it? What does this do? Does this push up again? Oops. Does that push up a bit more? No, that didn't move it, did it? So, yeah, it's just the M6 computer, really. Right, so we've had a look at the outside and we've seen what makes a tick. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll go to the bridge, have a quick look around the bridge. I think it's the same as the bug ship, to be honest with you. Uh, then I will change this vanity shield for my ball vanity shield. And we will take her into harm's way and uh, see how she performs. So, I shall see you momentarily. Well, here we are on the bridge. My, that load-up time took absolutely ages to uh, sort itself out. But anyway, we're here now. So, uh, as you can see, it is um, it is exactly like the bug ship bridge. Very spartan. Um, as you can see, no screen. Because the lead water, or the first, they had a little eye patch on, didn't they? And they could, uh, they determined what the whole of the crew could see. I should imagine in typical Jemadar fashion, uh, everybody was should have been concentrating on what they were doing rather than having a screen to distract them, which is, I think, the uh, mentality of how this ship's been put together. Lots of colour, isn't there? Now, as you know, um, when I'm doing some builds, I do like to interact with the crew and have a bit of a laugh. I do try and keep uh, the the learning process as jovial as possible um, and, and I also try to be different from other people who do reviews um, but what I'm going to try to do is when I'm dealing with a review such as this like a, a PvP review or part PvP review or uh, whatever um, I'll try and keep it to a bare minimum um, because I know um, some people don't like the um, humorous approach and some people do so I'll still try and continue to keep the balance uh, but in this case I'll keep it um, to a minimum well can't do anything else really because you can't get off this bridge anyway so I've got two crew members here and neither of them are going to speak to me anyway because they're both yeah they're, they're both well the Romulan anyway he's, he's, and, and she can't get out of her Iconian armor anyway because I've been asking her for the past eight weeks and uh, anyway, Mr. Romulan there is Mr. Serious, so we're not going to go and have a chat with him because, you know, he never, he never, never, never talks anyway. But right, so there you go. This is the bridge. Very simple. Can't get off it. But um, I do like it, strangely enough. It's very nice. I like the colours, and I like, I do like the design. Be nice to be wandered around the ship a little bit, but uh, anyway, you can't have everything, can you? Right, so we've uh, had a look at the outside, had a quick look at the build. Let's take her into harm's way and see how she performs, shall we? So I'll see you in just a little while. Well, this is the latest event, Best Serve Cold. So what better way to test this build out than to uh, kill two birds with one stone and complete the event while showing you how this build works shall we so hold on to your hats and here we go
station. Try and fire this uh, torpedo, or shall we? And give it a test. Let's try and find a target. Oh, it doesn't last very long, does it? These targets. This is the only annoying thing I find about this event, is some people just um, hover over the base and uh, don't do anything. And indeed they don't even go after the prisoners escaping either sometimes, which is quite annoying. For goodness sake, there's four of us playing, three bases. So one of us could vanish into the middle when we get to the next stage. Yes, feel free to join me when you want. So now we're going to try and get some of these transports. And as the ship can be fast, it makes sense that uh, I try and get them. If I can find them. The transport is leaving the surface. The prisoners are trying to there escape. There we go. Let's get that one. Another one we've got. Two. We haven't, we haven't even tested out these torpedoes yet, have we? Right on, on. Let's. <coughs> five to get through so we'll try and get those as well so she's quite agile so let's give this one good news with torpedo she flows the distance too quickly there that's the way let's look Woo, that was a big hit wasn't it once you damage the shields with these uh, beam arrays and then let that torpedo fly they're not going to live for very long it's a very very good piece of kit is that torpedo we got all of these Let's 
test the torpedo out on this heavy bird of prey, shall we? Well, that won't be much use, will it now? Right, okay. Okay, right, so. We're into the final phase. Dilithium haulers. Now these can be quite treacherous if you uh, destroy them and get a little bit too close. Here we go. Send the top here, don't go. I just manually set that torpedo up a little bit late. I should have waited while I started hitting it with beams first. Load its resistance and then sent in the torpedo. So. I've learnt the lesson, we'll see if we can do that in another one. And then we can repair our shields a little bit there. Eh? That's because we're getting too close to the dilithium hauler. My only problem with this is that we're about to get a little bit blase with the dilithium hauler. And they always end up catching me out sometimes, so I've got to be really careful. Like one of my torpedoes found its target there. Well, uh, it's been a little bit of a long review, hasn't it, reviewing this ship? Um, but, you've seen her in battle, and she's quite impressive, isn't she? Very manoeuvrable, and uh, yeah, I'm very pleased with her. She'll definitely uh, spearhead my fleet, especially in the PvP world, which I'm hoping to uh, explore later. Right, so here we are, back on Earth Sol. And uh, yes, it's been a very long review of this, hasn't it? I do apologise, but uh, we had a lot to get in, and uh, I wanted to make sure that I covered as much ground as possible for you. So, I hope you're all keeping safe. And uh, for now, I shall bid you good evening as it is here in the UK. A very dark and dank evening, I hasten to add. So, until next time, this is Jester, signing off. <laughs>